a represent Anima in West uh, Network, uh, which is an international network leading to a sustainable um, business network in the Middle East, uh, France, uh, Europe, uh, sorry, and Africa. 21 countries, uh, uh, investment uh, promotion agency, economical development, innovation networks, uh, investment and networks, uh, uh, companies federation clusters and uh, international institutes of research we contribute to two uh, strategic axes a, a sustainable growth of the investment and of the uh, companies in lieu of uh, in view of the sdgs and also creating linking between europe um the middle east and africa this uh, uh, webinar is organized around the csr and of the role of the label it is organized by Anima in the framework of the EPSOMED project. EPSOMED is a project that is co-financed by Europe, coordinated by Business Med, and to sustain countries from the uh, south of the Mediterranean and their a similar uh, organization in Europe. A couple of housekeeping information to start. You have a simultaneous interpretation uh, service, uh, French and English. Under the small flag. Um, please please leave your mics off uh, if you're not uh, speaking during the session, uh, during the Q&A. And the webinar is recorded so that you uh, can uh, see it in replay. These replays are uh, available on Anima's YouTube channel and also on the website uh, in the best practices uh, menu. Uh, a couple of dates to come from next webinars. Uh, these will be for the Meet Africa 22nd of December on the how to mobilize skills and funding from the diaspora, high level talents and 19th of January, we will have financing diaspora entrepreneurs in the digital age. And the 23rd of February, we will have the African diaspora entrepreneur specific path. We focus on the co-incubation. Last uh, housekeeping point, uh, please use the chat box in order to introduce yourself, giving us your name, organization and country. And then throughout the webinar, you can share your comments and questions and uh, your experiences. And we uh, will have a Q&A at 9.45 with our panelists. I now move to the context of this uh, webinar. Why talking? Why talk about CSR and sustainable development? You know, more and more companies are engaged, are focused in uh, CSR approach, and the regulation is evolving rapidly. In this respect. Uh, we see more and more visible examples in the media. You see some examples in on these uh, slides, uh, projects that are dangerous for our society or the environment are systematically uh, reported. Uh, the uh, maneuvers for, of uh, greenwashing can no longer stand, and this shows that the gravity of the challenge, the urgency of the situation is acknowledged not only by the scientific community and some activists, but from the uh, whole of the society. There are some companies pioneering questions like transitions and sustainable development. As a stakeholders of economical development, we want to acknowledge this with uh, a webinar. Uh, Anima is working since its inception on question of sustainable development beyond a 
quantitative approach in terms of capex uh, uh, investment uh, what has been invested in the mediterranean country the question uh, that we asked ourselves is of uh, is that of the quality of the investment and we realized that there was a lack of a tool to determine uh, the quality of the contribution to the uh, sustainable development. And today, and this is a result of an approach started more than 10 years ago, Anima is launching through EPSMED a um, web tool called Impact Rating. We, this will be presented in a webinar in 2023 to help the companies define their uh, the impact of their approach. This is a tool to support companies, allowing to assess the performance and the impact of a company in the respect of in the environment, social, societal, and so on. And we will get back to this. We are organizing, first of all, this uh, webinar to talk about two main themes. First of all, the evolution of the rules and regulation on CSR and especially on the adoption of a directive called the CSRD, Corporate Sustainability Report Directive, given a um, norms to have a compulsory uh, mandatory reporting about the sustainability of a company. This is really important because uh, Europe is uh, a pioneer with this uh, directive and so this directive can inspire partner countries but we will have of course an impact on european and non-european companies through the value chain second objective of this webinar we propose to reflect on how the organization supporting the companies can support the companies uh, rightly so uh, to tackle this uh, new regulation this new directive that like everything represents also a, an opportunity to have business mob models evolve towards more and more sustainability and uh, a better impact for the territory in order to do this we have two panelists today melody miranda melody is a head of csr sri and circular economy projects for afno group in france this group is service in society and sustainable development in france and internationally and you create solutions based on uh, voluntary action. You are one of the major stakeholders for impact and uh, impact evaluation and CSR in France and international. And second panelist, Duja Garbi, you have more than 20 years of experience in uh, Tunisia and uh, in um, Europe, you manage several companies in several sector, industry, service, or commerce. You are also expert and mentor, and you intervene as a specialist for the private sector for several international organizations. You can found it in 2019, the uh, Let's Start Accelerator in Tunisia, and you are still CEO. And uh, I will leave you the word to uh, tell us uh, what you do. You are a pioneer in the Anima uh, network like as a, a funding member of uh, Connect uh, presiding at the moment uh, the Anima network and in Connect you follow CSR themes, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, employment. Let's start with the first uh, topic, so the evolution of the norms on the CSR, and I give this delicate mission to uh, Ulity. Can you present our, uh, can you present us, sorry, the new directive CSRD? Uh, how is it? Uh, organize and what does that mean for European and non-European companies? Yes, hello everybody. 
Can I share my screen? Melody, sorry. Yes. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. So, as Zoe said in the introduction, there are a lot of projects on a European level on these topics. Before we get into the detail, just a, a little reminder of what we say when we talk about uh, ESG, SRI, or a CSR. Uh, ESG is uh, a mm, set of criteria, uh, environmental, social, and governance, so ESG. And generally, the companies that are uh, best performing have a CSR uh, approach, uh, corporate social responsibility, and those who want to invest in terms of sustainable development have a approach with the SRI, um, socially responsible investment. As we were saying in the beginning, uh, the Commission, since now several years, has been reflecting on how to create a, a normative a framework to manage the reporting of the companies uh, uh, beyond a, a certain threshold. We will get into the detail. Uh, this, uh, the taxonomy defines a list of uh, economical activities compatible with the European environmental ambition. And uh, the uh, SFDR uh, rules define obligation in terms of transparency for financial stakeholders. Today, all the companies uh, with more than 500 employees have to uh, fill up a DPEF uh, where they have to communicate and report on their CSR approach. And all the uh, companies in Europe uh, since the next uh, year, this form will transform in CSRD. So all companies with more than 500 employees will have to establish an annual report on sustainability uh, uh, with the themes that we will see afterwards. The application of this uh, new European uh, directive will uh, be firstly for all the companies already uh, making a, an annual statement and starting from the 1st of January 2025, all the companies with more than 500 employees and having a, a turnover of beyond 40 million euro annual. And starting from 1st of January 2026, all the uh, medium as small enterprises with more than 10 employees will have to do the, the same. This is uh, this obligation in reporting on sustainability will also concern companies that are not European, even though the directive is a European one. Here you have a list of uh, the topics of the themes that are concerned for the obligation of non-financial reporting. Three main pillars. Uh, you see the ESG uh, criteria here. So they will have uh, uh, to communicate information in terms of environment, in terms of mitigation or attenuation of climate change uh, on social, like fighting against pollution and um, respect of the uh, land and uh, maritime ecosystem. On social, they will have uh, to uh, communicate in uh, the, have it, the, 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 the 
chances given in the company, the working condition, the respect of the human rights, and in terms of gov governance, uh, they will have to define, they will have to inform on the composition of the administrative organs of the company, uh, eth inform ethical information, and uh, on company culture. So this is uh, just an example of the things that have to be in the report for the CSDR, CSRD, sorry. The uh, European Commission has created the EFRAG, uh, the consultative uh, European group on financial information that will uh, inform the company the companies on how to establish the non-financial report so the efrag has to create uh, the norms that you see on the screen on the main theme covered by the csrd what is also interesting to see is that uh, there's uh, norms that will uh, give a framework to the companies on how to establish their um, reports. They are aligned with the main report, reporting um, European system, sorry. All of these uh, framework converge or, or to, towards the same way of structuring non-financial information divided on four uh, pillar so governance strategy management of risks and opportunity and data and objectives i will send you the support and there is a hyperlink here that will uh, lead you to the articles pertinent to see how the companies of the european union will have to present their non-financial report in the future it is also interesting to answer to your question, Zoe, to see how uh, the ISO 26000 uh, and also the uh, CSR Engage uh, label can help the companies to answer to this uh, non-financial reporting as it will be mandatory in the future. As we said, the CSR so this director will uh, set it as mandatory to have a non-financial report on CSR and ESG. G. And uh, this will uh, uh, also help how uh, to measure non-financial information. And what it is interesting is the, the uh, CSR Engage label takes this logic and this approach of assessment of uh, the sustainable development of the company. And as you can see on the screen, there are several chapters, governance, deployment of CSR, HR, relation and working conditions. Let's have a focus on the uh, rules uh, taxonomy. The European Union started a great work uh, some year ago in order to put all the member states around the table and think together on how to structure a list of reference in order to define the activity sector that could be considered, could be deemed as uh, a sustainable. And this is the taxonomy. It's a list of activity sector considered by the European Union as contributing to the uh, sustainable development of Europe. More than 100 activities divided in three activity sectors. And uh, all these sectors are considered as eligible to uh, operate the energy and sustainable transition of the countries. 
a different tax the taxonomy comprehend two notions it is important to have them in mind to create in the non-financial report the taxonomy lists all the activities that are eligible if you are part of the hundred sector of activity divided in the 13 activities that i uh, showed you before you are automatically uh, eligible if you uh, if to be in order to be eligible to this taxonomy uh, you have uh, to fill three other conditions so to contribute to at least one of the sdgs of the european union not having collateral damages on the other five objectives. For instance, if you are strong in terms of uh, a circular economy, but you have a strong carbon footprint, you are not eligible. You do not fill the two criteria number two. And finally, third condition to be aligned, you have to abide by the human rights. If you, if you have a circular economy, uh, but you exploit uh, children in, Saudi, in, 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 in sub-Saharan Africa, for instance, that is an example. So this is the taxonomy. I think I said everything. I can stop my screen sharing, Zoe. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe just a short recap for who it's applicable and starting from when this directive will be applicable. It will be in Europe, but can it have an impact for other companies as well? And then I will leave the floor to Abuja to react on what that could imply and how to receive this information like in Tunisia or in other countries of the region. So starting from 2026 on uh, the financial statement of 2025 is not only European companies that will have to abide and, con and, and comply with this non-financial report, but is also all the companies that are not necessarily European, they do not have their headquarters in Europe, but they have um, an activity uh, that generate uh, a, a generate sorry an activity in Europe that uh, with a turnover than more than 100 million euro. Okay, thank you very much, Dusha. On this first uh, topic of uh, the directive, uh, thank you very much for being here. I wanted to ask you how this uh, initiative is uh, perceived is seen in uh, tunisia first of all the stakeholders are there um are there uh, made aware of this is there any approach of uh, um, awareness raising and what is the signal sent uh, to public and private institutions in Tunisia and uh, what's the state of things in terms of CSR in Tunisia. Thank you very much, Zoe. Thank you very much for organizing this uh, roundtable around these topics, which are, I realize that is the 2022 topic since uh, the the, since the inception of the project on CSRD, there have been a lot of actions and activity to raise awareness in the companies. And I'd like to uh, confirm that we have been informed, of course, uh, and, uh, of this uh, directive that is a pending vote uh, at the moment is not been it has not been voted by the parliament yet, but it will be soon. And I, and there have been, and there has been a movement in Tunisia and throughout the region in order to explain to the companies the impact of this directive. First of all, uh, of course, it will have an impact uh, in uh, on companies that are in the southern country, especially those who are part of the value chain, European value chain, and they have. Uh, conditions that that make them eligible for this because they have business in Europe. Of course, this will have an impact on companies working on these value chain that are 
in the countries in the south of the Mediterranean, so in the region. We have to say that uh, there has been there have been many events. The European Union delegation here in Tunisia organized debate with the private sector in order to present this new directive and discuss about it. Also, the program Medicine Me, and I'd like to thank Christophe who organized a regional event with the countries of the south of the Mediterranean in order to discuss about the impacts of this kind of directive. And I think we need to do a lot more because people do not understand. Uh, well, their reaction uh, when they hear this is uh, it, this is an additional barrier for us to get in Europe. How we will, how can we do for the profitability of our project? How can we position ourselves in terms of? Uh, prices if there are additional taxes that will be added to, uh, to, to tap into the uh, northern market and a country such as Tunisia oriented a lot on export uh, we had a, a lot of question and we need to look for the means to up Date our way of doing and to understand and uh, this approach and to comply with that in order uh, to avoid losing the market on which we work right now and continue to exist on the European market. So there is a lot to do. I think I just uh, cited some initiatives uh, that have been uh, taken uh, to raise awareness, but of course we need to do more. We need to follow up on how the thing the 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 the, the thing will evolve. We uh, the uh, Euro European Union talks about 2023, but then uh, there will be two years to get. Uh, prepared and then it is important also to find the means uh, to be ready for this i many companies uh contacted uh, take on to contact with the european union asking for means in order to be ready to this uh, evolution to this uh, uh, new directive i don't want to call it restriction but in order to comply with uh, this uh, regulation i would like to add to that the fact that today and this is a topic that was debated this week with the european delegation in tunisia um, about a carbon footprint how to calculate one's own carbon footprint and also to get ready to these uh, carbon tax at the border of Europe, Tunisia is uh, working today on its uh, own uh, way, its own uh, carbon tax in order for companies to know, to in order for companies to get uh, ready for uh, this evolution. What I'm trying to say, you know, the companies cannot calculate the carbon tax today. There are some tools, there are some companies trying to do that. And even those who are at the forefront realize that some information um, depend also on their interaction with other companies or with the society is not at all easy to calculate one's own carbon footprint and consecutively the uh, carbon tax one will have to pay. There is a lot to do publicly and privately uh, to in the public sector, sorry, and in the private sector in order to teach companies uh, uh, how to calculate uh, their own carbon footprint and the carbon tax they'll have to pay. And there should be some uh, uh, initiatives in order to help them do it uh, and uh, help them not to lose the markets they have in Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Duja, for this uh, uh, testimony. Uh, the directive has been adopted on the November the 10th last 
Uh, there are some uh, positive elements with the European Parliament lately, uh, luckily enough, and the next step will be in 2023, will be the publication of the norms in order to uh, formalize all of this. Thank you very much. I lost this information. Okay, but is it the objective of the webinar now? So to continue on what uh, you said, uh, Duja, giving oneself the means, raising awareness and not starting at the last minute, yes. Um, it will be a financial performance factor for the companies to be prepared to this obligation in time, not only because it's uh, mandatory, it's a regulation, but also because we are on a, an approach on defining what is my impact, trying to lower it. I, I, CSR is not only a cost, but is uh, something that is good for the companies and for the society. It's something that we highlighted in a conference organized by Connect on CSR at the end of October in Tennessee. This uh, leads me to the second topic of this webinar, how the organization to support companies can support their companies. We understood the importance of uh, the approach to raise awareness, but uh, on the operational level, another important approach is to propose some labels. I will uh, firstly give the floor to Melody to test to give a testimony on the, her experience with the CSR label created by AFNO. What is that about and how does it help uh, companies to get in ready to respond to this new directive and obligation and also how and why it is a tool to steer uh, non-financial and financial performances of the company. Melody, the floor is yours. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I share the screen. Can you see it? Okay, perfect. Right, good, very good. So as I was saying, indeed, this commitment is a method, an assessment methodology that uh, aims at uh, an approach structurating uh, with the um, aims, uh, priority aims, uh, as is asked. So, as we as we said, uh, this is going to uh, have three typology of information: so strategy and enterprises. And so we should uh, uh, communicate it to financial extent that is is a contribution to sustaining develop development, and it has no impact on environment. Uh, and uh, it's supposed also to be uh, evaluated on the governance governance basis um, in order to create a really sustainable sustainable activity. In second, in a second time, the companies should communicate how. This was possible. How did uh, it been implemented? Uh, so who does what? And how this is an answer to priority goals of the strategy. And finally, in third place, this has to um, prove to the stakeholder the results. The results are connected to the priorities. This is what this directive is going to ask to the enterprises that are uh, involved in that. And today it's very interesting to say that these enterprises are already committed to this RSE uh, path. And so they are already uh, involved in globalization exercises, and practices. And so they already have this approach. They have already these habits. They are used to that to relate that to priority goals and to implement this uh, um, approach and measure the performances. And if we look in details, the way that it has been constituted, I mean, the reference, 
says you can find three chapters. The first, you can uh, see the governance of the company, the way that those have been implemented as far as the sustainable uh, development is concerned, how they are identifying these priority goals and the way uh, they are a positive examples uh, in order to boost the development, the sustainability development is concerned. So chapter two, three, four, and then five. So how this is possible, how this has been implemented so far. So how their HR are used in the enterprises, how there are mm, uh, working uh, as far as biodiversity protection and environment is concerned, how uh, you can uh, use this renewable energy. So we really are connected to the second typology of information uh, for uh, required by the RCSD, that is to say all the implementation information to do that you know, for real, to how to implement. And finally, in the third the chapter now, so the, the third, the, the three last chapter, six, seven, and eight, there are the outputs, how their indicators are selected so far. So that is to say, for instance, if a strategy, even enterprises, uh, as to measure the annex mission so there's to have um a table and uh, there it is so if it's not the case uh, there will be a warning uh, and so uh, we it has to choose up an indicator to measure that greenwashing measures that is to say how we can work and use that in our, our as if in order to be online in phases with the European community nor rules. So then I'd like to show you this slide, but I won't go in detail. Different criteria of liabilization. So with the whole set of elements required by the RSE rules. So I will put available this slide, of course, and so you can go deeper whenever you are interested in doing so. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, as far as companies are, are concerned, we have lots of experiences and indeed many of them are already involved in globalizations. In fact, uh, oh yes, of course, today they are involved in the structuration of this process. And so many of them have already adopted this uh, uh, implementation of priority uh, goals. And uh, so uh, especially inside the European Union, uh, uh, so as far as the financial reporting is concerned. So uh, we have a bunch of information in this way, but uh, the uh, but officially the first reports of these will will be published in 2023. So there, only there, we could say if they have. I mean, the enterprises have uh, uh, you know be um, uh, online with that. Uh, so we need some time and uh, on. See a question in the chat. I ha I can answer if you like. Um, yes, yes, but the more global impact, not only as far as legislation is concerned. I mean, what is the added value to a company, a real added value to a company by adopting those? Uh, there are only benefits, all, nothing but benefits for uh, companies because. Uh, it, ha it could um, improve uh, the RSE um, uh, objectives. It could, it's a roadmap to get to that, to achieve those goals. Uh, and these uh, also have some macro impacts in the strategy of the enterprises. 
uh, not only in European Union, uh, but we can see that, especially in France, we have a problem. Maybe you have heard that when, uh, you know, we, we call that the escape of brains, you know, the very brilliant, uh, um, uh, the clever, the, more, the, the, the very skilled um, uh, go abroad. So we have to keep them in, in our countries. And so uh, because many times they apply young people, young brides, brains, as we call them, applied um, abroad. And so let, that's better to involve them in um, our territory so we can keep them in our country. And uh, so there's um, a factor of attraction for those and for us. So this then it can turn in economic terms uh, to a long run, of course. And uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, um, sustainable development is concerned, we have to valorize this. Uh, maybe it's good to answer the question as far as the reporter is concerned, uh, asked uh, recent, that have, it has been asked recently. So I'd like uh, to ask the same question to Isa. Well, as for uh, as a tool of connect, uh, which is the path, uh, which is the added values to companies that enjoy this level? Well, Zoe, I do believe that connect, connect has been pioneer and but and visioner, I would say, because this it focused on the implementation of RSU label as far as Tunisia is concerned in partnership with many local partners and stakeholders, public and private also. So the idea was to familiarize to the RSE um, globalization and sustainable development and so far. So, so we started to do that, uh, to make this awareness campaign with RSE as far as the subject is concerned, to discuss, to spread this concept of RSE as far as a social responsibility and accountability of the enterprises concerned and the impact on the durability and the sustainability of the company. When we started, you know, it was something quite new indeed, but the companies asked, uh, what, what's that? just explain all oh, right yes it's true we do that action we carry out that action but we are not aware about the impact and we didn't know that it can be called rse so they really wanted to be um as an exa an example they wanted to understand uh, so we create a label on three levels uh, on three extents uh, well um um, gold and silver in order to give the possibility, uh, no matter what size of enterprises, to be involved in this RSE labelization without any obligations to show, without any constraints, I mean, but just to say that that's something that you we have to be online with, I mean, the local uh, uh, rules, but also put in place, I mean, implement it, to implement the first acceleration um, points of four levels, economic, environmental, governance, and social. So uh, we had some um, goals that weren't uh, uh, as measurable so we couldn't assess that but we we try to create a chart for citizens and this was a very good to communicate towards members and stakeholders and then we created a, a data a bank in order to uh, have some uh, uh, explanation about the differentiation of labelizations where we gold uh, label the gold oh, oh, it's the top of course that needed a reporting so i mean that today of course so the labelization uh, it, uh, it has a cost we have to accompany them we have a group very test group that is certify assess rsu 
engagements, and we have eight um, companies that are love, that have the labels of the decades, they can do the Tunisian, uh, big groups uh, like chemistry or others, but also very small enterprises that uh, were interested in doing so, and um, they uh, are applied to get a label and especially in the textile the textile are, are some initiatives uh, for partners uh, that wants to structure a sector like textile I repeat that and the idea is to put in place to implement a policy that allows to structure all those actions extra economic actions because we do know that the aim is to get benefits to earn the money of an enterprises but we need to know how the the impact of those um actions uh, and so to be uh, well set in their territories which are the the interests of uh, stakeholders, so the chain value, the value of chain, you know, the best practice as far as responsibilities is concerned and so far so on. So I'd like to say that there are a lot of initiatives like the Boers, say uh, the stake market that um, launched AG re reporting uh, for the um, um, stake uh, market exchange. And so they are lobbyized, uh, I would say, an uh, RST, and so maybe we can improve that as well. So there are many, many initiatives that are under discussions now in Tunisia about that. And uh, moreover, a good thing that Connecta, uh, and you know that very well, well, we, in 2023, we have a huge site, let's say, a huge work uh, to the labelization in Tunisia. Maybe we need to adapt to RSD new um, requirements or new tools that you have, like the new tool that you have just presented at the beginning of this session. And in particular, I'm thinking about the diagnostic part of the enterprises uh, to measure the, how healthy the enterprise is uh, compared to that. And so, also uh, the cost of label are received. So by international point of view, there are kind of questions that we do ask ourselves. And so there are many international partner that ask myself questions as far as responsibilities as concerned compared to whereas uh, and so um this uh, is uh, an answer to the you know the expectations we have so that would be a good thing to uh, put this label that uh, it has already 10 years old to put to to, to upgrade that and to adapt it to the new um needs that we are faced to because companies today has to have to understand that it was something new when we started with that but it's not uh, new it's not a plus it's a mess today and so they have to understand to get interested uh, uh, more and more to that because they need to be in confidence with the international standards in order not to lose markets to international extent. Thank you very much indeed, Said. Thank you very much indeed. And this last point, it, you know, uh, it was related to the um, international stuff. So we really uh, need uh, to understand now uh, uh, about these, uh, but I want to give the word the microphone, Christophe Lover, that in order to um, get to do him to tell us more about this project, because I think that is the time to, um, you know, to call him as far as you have any questions related to this subject. Christoph Malen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, to give me the floor. So we, uh, original project of the European Union, not our goal is to improve the PMO uh, affair on two axes, financials and internalizations. As far as internalization is concerned, and also financialization is concerned, I would say that we have to put some standards in place and so those two pillars, those two subjects are 
are impacted, uh, affected by the evolution of ro roles in Europe, and not only, of course, and they have an impact on the chain values of the neighbors' countries uh, on the south, the of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, starting by Morocco to Jordania, all those countries in between, and. Uh, yeah, of course, we um, there was a European delegation in Tunisia, and we have to discuss this point, and we did it. And which is the impact, as far as concert is concerned, but in terms also about opportunity, opportunity to their chances. So I won't be very long, but we the output of these discussions, dialogue that we had. And we are seeing that today. I have under I have heard private stakeholder, private stakeholder. It is more private as far as the issues is concerned. But we are uh, we are talking about um, environmental of affairs, and so we are more uh, you know act, we are um, we aim at the um, public sector. Why? Because we do believe that in the private sector, the private sector is more advanced in that. And so let's ask why. The, does it depend on uh, some strategies? Well, we're talking about Anima now, this very good um, project. Or should we uh, integrate these aspects in deeper in national strategies? So we were wondering that if institute, whether if institution, if institutions are able and the capability to do that. In my opinion, that's a no. We have a huge gap to uh, uh, to work on with so we are wondering and we wonder and we ask the european union as well uh, as far as international cooperation is concerned that it's time to up to, to prepare an upgrade plan for the uh, neighbor countries on the south of mediterranean like you know in 90s some initiatives for those countries on the south of mediterranean region to uh, you know uh, be online with industry as far uh, in order to be more present in the European market, but not only. So we have to be in phase. Twenty five years have passed from that time, and so today we have to upgrade uh, enterprises, and that's why. And that is why in my opinion, that would be appropriate to think a new partnership in order to uh, um, aim at this moderniz modernizing these aspects. So policymakers uh, have to uh, review their investment strategies, and that is the work to be carried out, in my opinion. Thank you very much indeed. Um, these witnesses this was very interesting. So uh, to uh, call the public sectors to be more and more involved. So do not hesitate to um, answer to this point, to react to this point uh, issued by, raised by Christoph Malo. So um, in the meantime, I just suggest to um, uh, see questions by Monsieur Sati. There, a uh, melody, it might be for you. This uh, CSMD and Green. Uh, yeah. Yes, the uh, question was uh, the reporting, uh, as far as the reporting is concerned. So, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm thinking about the reference. Yes, yeah, that, that, that completely. That I what I tried to. That was I tried to explain in my slide, but I don't know if this has passed in the translations. I mean, the European Commission, the Parliament, um, for seen to uh, prepare uh, to be in uh, put a line to be online to link um, with this uh, European position the Algerie Algerie Algeria if uh, we G R E uh, this G R E G R I G R I these initiatives that's a frame for all uh, companies with an extra financial report. 
So uh, GRE, GRE is integrating in this version, in this, this frame, let's say, the structuralization of SSRD. That is to say, it has to be online. In, and so the big, big references uh, by an institutional point of view or to global extent has to um, make uh, uh, able this convey to the same methodology of assessments to be able to enjoy the same um, inve investment investments, the same possibility for everybody. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Melody. So another thing, question about uh, uh, international recognition uh, uh, to uh, the label at the international extent. So uh, a passport, a passport, RSA passport. Okay, I have an RSA passport of Mar Morocco, Moroccan, and my enterprises work in the export in Tunisia or Egypt. Uh, uh, could we try to invent, make up uh, a mutual recognizable um, methodology and tool, I would say so. Uh, this is a very pertinent uh, uh, question so for the possibility in the Europe melody. What would you like to say about that? Thank you very much indeed, Zoe, to give me this opportunity to speak about that. There it is uh, one year that we started this initiative. So we started by um, negative uh, um, constatation. I mean, let's say that we uh, there was a gap. So um, uh, we need uh, we need a. Uh, a uniform, um, uh, a, a uniform. Uh, you know, we, we need an, uh, a label because there were too many labels, and so we need uh, one reference, as I would say. This was a uh, quite uh, disturbing for our uh, for stakeholders. Uh, so uh, we they had to enterprises to pick up the right uh, label, RSL label. So one year ago. That has been decided the responsibility of Europe in, in the frame of this initiative. Um, that was a European movement of labelization um, makers that could should propose one good label that was uh, solid. So first of all, it has to be uh, um, in place. And they have to be uh, trained, I mean, trainers uh, for um, labelization uh, assignment uh, on the same basis. So they had to federate that uh, at the European levels. And so in Fra French, uh, Italian, Spanish, also Canadian uh, trainers. Uh, to prepare a label that was considered uh, common and solid. So maybe tomorrow we would work on that, especially in the frame of the project, Christopher. So did we answer to the question that was asked as far as, uh, you know, foreign branches? Oh, this was a very good question indeed. It's not yet so clear indeed because uh, we need to have some more uh, elements in order to clarify that point. But normally, typically, uh, these uh, um, the um, foreign branches are um, allowed by the headquarters when the headquarters have, of course, the lab, the lab labels. And so it has to be consolidated and communicated to the to all foreign branches of a headquarter um, company that has a level. I do not know if this is clear, but the branches uh, can't, uh, they can't, uh, uh, prepare their uh, reporting. They need to go through the headquarters and headquarters have to communicate in the frame of uh, uh, its uh, uh, rap, rap, report to the uh, 
to our committees. So in any case, even if uh, this, there is this possibility, I mean, that the foreign branches can uh, make uh, their its uh, own report, mm -hmm. I think that is interesting that uh, the, um, you know, the companies has to report their goals and achievements because that is going to be a, a compulsory mandatory in the future no matter the size no matter the staff and so far so on so uh, that is uh, possible to be uh, mandatory in the future though that is a very good habit to do that i hope that is answer to the question so do not hesitate uh, but i just uh, like uh, to share if you want uh, you know to take the floor but when shall we introduce that i mean the roadmap the roadmap which is the uh, work of to the months to come to implement this tool online. So we discussed that during the um, academy last week in Marseille with many organizations, so in Tunisia, Jordania, Morocco, Algeria, and Algeria, many, many countries. And uh, unfortunately, we had quite a few problems. But anyway, as an example, in France, OK, I can see the reaction of that. I hope that the problem of visa would be less and less present in the future. Anyway, what I wanted to say, just to give some concrete examples, that is an issue, that is an issue which stand in central part of, the, um, of several organizations. So we are thinking about this especially with the business course and uh, in national extent and also regional extent to resonant free and province promotion that uh, wish to adopt this tool in order to follow the impact on companies or enterprises no matter for modulation of um, in enterprises projects or organized actions even events for investments that's something that is a priority now uh, in this uh, net animal networking. So I'm going to share my screen now. And uh, uh, thank you very much indeed for all uh, of you. And thank you very much indeed to Melody and as well for these uh, the presentations of those very complex subjects uh, for our companies and that uh, um, no matter the organization, public or private, in Europe and in our part in our country, partners' country. So uh, I'll give you a new reactions about a new webinar. Um, okay, new data, new data. You can see the agenda. The next webinar organized on other subjects here. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. We are on time, one hour time. So please uh, spread the documents, spread that, and this output that would be very, very soon um, spread. Merci. Goodbye. Goodbye.